This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is week 29 of the Master Electrician Exam Prep Series. This week we're going to be dealing with sizing grounding electrode conductors when we're dealing with some different situations, just so we can get the full aspect of what's going on. This is part three in our sizing grounding and bonding series. Highly recommend that you go back and watch all the videos in order just to make it uh, you know, more beneficial for you. Also, this is assuming that you've already seen and mastered all of our journeyman series which you can check out on this channel and on the Electrical Code Coach channel. But if you just head over to electricalexamcoach.com, it'll work you right through it in order. Let's get to it. What size copper grounding electrode conductor would you select for a 200 amp service with two watt main copper service conductors with a ground rod as the electrode? Remember the first thing that we always ask ourselves when we're dealing with the GEC is does it mention the type of electrode in the question? This case it does. So we may not be using table 250.66 at face value. Anytime it does mention the type of electrode, always start in section 250.66, reading the black bold headings looking for keywords. So as we go down through there, we get to 250.66. We look at the black bold headings. When we get to part A, it states connections to rod pipes or plates. I feel like we're in the right section. As we read down through there, that's, you know, if you, if you, Use your keywords, get to the right section, look at the black bold headings that has more of your keywords. Then you're going to say, hey, I feel like I can take the time to invest in reading this paragraph. As we read down through that paragraph, we find that it's not required to be larger than a number six if it's copper. Okay, and if you went to the table, okay, you may have a different value. That's why it's super important we understand if it doesn't mention the type of electrode, we will use table 250.66. If it does mention the type of electrode, before we go to that table, we need to make sure that we read in section 250.66 to find out if there's any specifics. And in this case there was, and it said that it was not required to be larger than a number six. Great job. What size copper grounding electrode would you select for a 200 amp service with two watt main copper service conductors with a concrete encased electrode? Okay, first thing, does it mention the type of electrode? Yes, it does. So we may not be using table 250.66 at face value. Anytime it does mention the type of electrode, always start back in section 250.66, reading the black bold headings, looking for more keywords. As we read down through there, we find that part B is for concrete encased electrodes. So I feel like we're in the right section. We take our time, we read down through the paragraph, and we find out that it's not required to be larger than a number four copper. Great job. What size copper grounding electrode conductor would you select for a 200 amp main service with two watt copper service conductors with a ground ring comprised of number four copper? So the first thing is, does it mention the type of electrode? Yes, it does. So we may not be using table 250.66 at face value. Anytime it does mention the type of electrode, start in section 250.66, reading the black bold headings, looking for more keywords. As we read down through there, we find out in part C, it's talking about ground rings. So we take a minute and we read the paragraph and we find out that it's not required to be larger than whatever size conductor that the ground ring was comprised of. So ours was built from a number four and we're gonna select four. Great work. What size copper grounding electroconductor would you select for a 100 amp service with number two main aluminum service conductors. So the first thing we ask is, does it mention the type of electrode? No, it doesn't. So we're gonna use table 250.66 at face value. Now, if we have our book tabbed, we can use our GEC tab and we're gonna head to table 250.66. It's on page 116 of the 2017 and on page 123 of the 2020. Remember, whenever you first get to a table, read the black bolt heading to make sure you're in the right table. It says grounding electrode conductor, so I feel like we're in the right section. Now, this is where we have to be careful, okay? Because it's wanting a copper grounding electrode conductor, 
but our service conductors are aluminum. So we have to make sure that we select from the respective columns when we cross over. So we start here in the aluminum on the left-hand side, find our conductor, number two, which is gonna fall under the first category. Then when we cross over to make our selection of the size of the GEC, then we just have to make sure that we select the right one. So we start in aluminum, we finish in copper, and we select A. What size copper grounding electrode conductor would you select for a 225 amp service with 250 KC mil main aluminum service conductors? First thing we're gonna ask is does it mention the type of electrode? No, it doesn't. So we're gonna use table 250.66 at face value. If you have your code book tabbed, you can use your GEC tab and head to table 250.66. Now, when we first get to the table, we always read the black bolt heading to make sure we're in the right table. Once we establish that we are, then we can go ahead and use the table. Remember, we always use the black bolt headings to navigate a table, reading from top to bottom and left, from left to right as we use it. So first off, we have to go back to our question and establish what type of metal did they use for our service conductors. In this case, it was aluminum, so we're gonna be choosing from the aluminum side for the service conductor side, and then when we go to make the GEC selection, it's wanting us to use copper. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna make the two proper selections. We're gonna come over and tee off into the GEC side of the table, and we're gonna make our selection, and in this case, it's not required to be larger than a number four. Great job. Copper grounding electrode conductor would you select for a 400 amp service with parallel 4 aught main aluminum service conductors? So the first thing we do is, does it mention the type of electrode? No, it doesn't. So we're gonna be using table 250.66 at face value. If you have your code book tabbed, you can use your GEC tab or head to the respective page. And if you read right there where it says size of largest ungrounded conductors or equivalent area for parallel conductors. Now what that means is, is if you have it in a single conductor, you can use this table for the single conductor. But if you've got parallel conductors, what you're going to do is you're going to total that and find out the approximate area and then use the table as if it were one conductor to size it. OK, and we're going to work through it now. So first thing we need to do is we need to figure out the approximate area of a 4 out conductor. So let's head to Chapter 9, Table 8, just like we did when we were doing um, voltage drop questions. And that's where we're going to figure out the approximate uh, area of this conductor. OK, and we're going to figure out we need to figure it out in circular mills because that's what we're dealing with is circular mills. So we're dealing out the approximate area of the conductor in circular mills. When we start on the left hand side of this table and we come down to four out, then we skip over two columns in circular mills in area. We're going to find that a single four out conductor is two hundred eleven. Six hundred. Circular mills per four out. Now, this is listed in circular mills, not KC mills. If you wanted to do KC mills, you would just divide by a thousand. OK, but we can read it in C mills and be able to understand our table. We have two of these conductors, so we need to multiply it by two. And that's going to give us four hundred twenty three thousand two hundred C mills. OK, so it'd fall in the four hundred section of KC mills, right? OK, now let's flip back to table 250.66. And when we get back to table 250.66, all we have to do now is treat this like one conductor and find out what category it's in. So we have to first be sure we're in the aluminum section. That's where big mistakes can be made. First, we come to the aluminum section because our main conductors are aluminum. So we go down until we're in the section that says over 250 through 500 KC mil. Now our number is listed in C mils, so we just need to fall it in that category. If this table was listed in C mils, it would say 250,000 right there through 500,000. Okay, but they've already converted over to KC mils. So our number falls right there in between the 250,000 and 500 in the aluminum section there. So we go over and then carefully go over and go to the copper section to make sure that we are pulling the correct grounding electrode conductor, and we're gonna find out that it's a number two. So just take your time, work through the steps. Essentially, you're converting the two conductors over to one conductor, 
in approximate area in, in circular mills, and then you're going to find out where they fall on the table. Great job. All right, y'all, that's it for this week. So catch up with us next week on the Master Series where we start sizing bonding jumpers. So super excited about that. We're going to be working in table 250.102C1, working through it, learning how to manage it. It's a little more easier to deal with than the grounding electroconductor. So if you made it this far, I know you can make it. Remember, the only way that you lose is if you quit. Listen, I know it's hard to get your license, but don't forget the reasons that you're doing this. The reasons is what's going to give you results. I am the Electrical Code Coach. If you could do me a personal favor before we get off today and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell button. That way we can keep this thing moving and keep fighting the good fight. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it.